Hi guys, it's Mr. Wachowski from Central Cabarrus High School Guidance Office. Um, so I want to go over your PSAT results from October of 2014. I want to look closely at your score report uh, and hopefully when you leave you understand what your score report means, how you did on the test, and then what you do next with your score report. Okay, so this is what your score report looks like. Um, at the top of the page, you'll see your name. Uh, I'm gonna make believe that I'm this student. I'm a B student uh, for your example. Uh, but you see your scores uh, in the bubbles across the top, reading, math, and writing skills. Okay, your score report has four um, parts to it, going from top to bottom. Uh, of course, at the top is your scores. Below that is your skills, below that is your answers, and then at the bottom of the page is the next steps. Now from left to right, of course, you see your scores, critical reading, math, writing, and each column is that particular subject's uh, details of the test. So let's unpack uh, your score report and look at each part so we understand how to read it. Um, we saw that my score in critical reading was a 50. Uh, here it is kind of blowing up a little bit. Critical reading, I had a 50. Below that you're going to see a little bar uh, that goes from 20 to 80. Uh, of course 20 is the minimum that you can receive on any test. Uh, and then of course the highest score you can get on each part is 80 points. Um, below that is a little kind of a, a, a window bar here, 46 to 54 is my window. And what that means is if I were to take the test again, I would score probably somewhere in the window of 46 to 54 on the test. Below that is a percentile. Now this compares me to every student uh, across the nation taking the test. And there were probably about 2 million juniors taking the test uh, back in October. Um, I scored at the 55th percentile, which means I scored as well or better than 55% of the juniors taking the test. I did not score as well as 45% of the juniors taking the test. So anywhere around that 50th percentile is an average or perfectly average score uh, and usually is a is a good score around that 50th percentile um, there are you may be a sophomore and you'll see that the scores uh, in percentile are listed as uh, compared to sophomores taking the test uh, on that test day okay so usually at this point students want to know how um, how did I do on the test and what does it tell me about how I will do on the SAT? Um, what we do to convert the PSAT to an SAT is simply to add a zero to each section of the test. So my scores, I had a 50 in reading, 52 in math, 44 in writing. You just add, you multiply by 10 or add a zero to the end of all your scores. My 50 becomes a 500 my 52 becomes a 520, my 44 becomes a 440, and then I total them. And in my score, my converted or predicted SAT score is a 1460. And you'll hear students talk about their SAT scores and they'll say, well, I had a 1500 or I had a 2100. Uh, what they're talking about is all three parts of their test combined. That's how they did on the SAT. So the next question students usually have is how did I do? Did I pass? Did I fail? Well, there is no passing or failing on the PSAT, but instead a good score is a score that will help you get into the four-year college or university that you want to get into. So what I've done on this page is shown you uh, some examples. Now this isn't all the tests in North Carolina. But this is some examples of four-year college universities and their average SAT uh, score for their students that they're accepting. Now, of course, I put Duke at the top because their average um, student that's getting accepted has a 2200 on the SAT. And if you remember, the highest score you can get on each part is an 80 or an 800. So the highest score you can get on the SAT is a 2400. 
So the average student uh, getting accepted to Duke has a 2200. But the rest of this page kind of gives you some more examples of four-year college universities in North Carolina and their average SATs. Um, probably our most popular is UNC Charlotte. Uh, about, they average about a 1600, 1680, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, I put Wake Forest in, in parenthesis because uh, they actually don't require the SAT or the ACT for admission. Um, that's pretty rare, but they don't require it, so you can get in without that. So these are just some examples, and you can do more research at any particular four-year college or university on their admissions webpage to see what their average student profile of the average student that they're accepting, what it looks like. Okay, so how much does your SAT count in admission? Um, college representatives will tell you it's about 20% of their decision of whether they're accepting you or not. So it is a relatively small um, percentage of their consideration. The rest of it, the 80%, is those things listed there. Difficulty of your courses, your grades, the trend of grades, 9th through 11th grade, uh, extracurricular activities, special talents, things like that is the remaining 80% of their decision, which is the larger part of their decision. So who gets my PSAT scores? Well, nobody except you and I. Um, they're yours, they're given to you, um, they're in your file, I look at them. Uh, but that's as far as they go. They do not get reported to colleges. Uh, they do not get reported to scholarship organizations. They're your scores. Uh, once you decide to take the SAT, um, you decide who gets your SAT scores. You actually put down a code and send them to colleges or send them to scholarship organizations. Um, when you do take the SAT, perhaps you'll take it multiple times, which you can do. You can take it as many times as you want. Um, but colleges will factor in your highest scores from every test that you take. So you want to send all of your scores so the colleges can pick out the highest reading and the highest math and the highest writing. And they call that super scoring when they combine to give you your highest score. Okay, continuing on, looking back at your score report, let's take a look at the next section, which is uh, kind of in the middle. It's called your skills. And what this tells you in each section, uh, reading, math, and writing, um, how you did on those particular skills in that section. So let's look at reading real quick. What I tell students is this allows you to quickly look at that section to see what was the part of the test that you did the worst on. What, what's the weakest section? Well, I can at a glance with these little barcodes, I can tell, um, that this particular section, organization ideas, I did not do very well on. I, I scored only two of eight correct. I omitted two, which means I left two blank. Um, and then I can see in reasoning and inference, I did well. Uh, math, I did the best. And you can tell because the bar graph, all of these are strong. This one particular, algebra and functions, I did very well. My worst section was writing skills. And you can tell all of the uh, bar graphs are kind of skewed over to the left. Uh, I did not do well in for correctly formed sentences. Now, let me talk about something um, and I'll have more detail in a minute about, but this is your online access code to something called uh, Quick Start or My College Quick Start, which I'll give you more details about in a moment. But it will allow you to go to an online account where you can look at all of these sections, all of your answers, and then more questions like the, the ones that you got didn't do well with. And you can study and practice, especially those particular uh, skill areas that you did not do well. And you're gonna see this code a couple places in your test. All right, so your skills. All right, so your answers below that, moving toward the bottom of the score report, is your answers. Now, you have the test booklet in front of you, and now you have the score report that has all of the answers. And uh, you could go through every single section if you wanted to. You could look at the correct answer, your answer. Of course, uh, there's a key there, and it'll tell you uh, a check mark is correct. 
if there's a letter there that tells you uh, you did not get it correct, uh, but this is your answer, right? And then over on the right hand side, it tells you the difficulty of the, of the question, whether it was an easy question, a medium question, or a hard question, okay? So that's your answers. Now, um, let's take a look. The math section of your answers is a little bit different uh, in that it's not just a multiple choice. There's one part of math where you uh, answered student produced responses. Instead of a multiple choice question, you uh, wrote down an answer and bubbled in that particular answer. So in that, that section, um, it gives you the correct answer and then your answer again, check mark is correct, and if it's wrong, there's your answer uh, below that. Okay, moving on to the bottom of your score report is the next steps. And again, here is that online access code to, to your quick start account. Now, um, I would strongly encourage you, and I'm gonna show you a video in a minute about quick start, uh, because essentially everything that's on this paper scoreboard is in your quick start account and it's free you have the access code now you can go into that and you can do more research um, you can do more research about careers you had said I had said I'm interested in sport and fitness fitness administration management uh, but you can research other careers you can search for colleges and save colleges in your quick start account and then you can take a personality test you can practice and take another practice SAT inside of this free quick start account okay uh, so what do you do next of course I said you use your access code go into your quick start account search for colleges um, make an SAT study plan uh, perhaps you decide you're going to take the SAT uh, for one of the upcoming SATs um, and these are all at Central Cabarrus. Uh, there's an upcoming January 24, March 14, May 2nd, and June 6th SATs. You can register on collegeboard.com or even through your Quick Start account. Um, if you receive free or reduced lunch, you can be eligible for a fee waiver. Now, normally the cost to take the SAT is uh, fifty two dollars and fifty cents so for some students that's very expensive um, if you feel like you want a fee waiver to take the SAT just talk to your counselor and um, they can help you get a fee waiver uh, to take the SAT okay lastly um, in a moment I'm gonna show you another video uh, it's a short it's like four minute video about my college quick start and uh, it's the online uh, portion of your PSCT score report where you can practice, you can search for colleges, search for college majors, do personality tests and other kind of tests. Um, so this is the conclusion of looking at your paper score report. Uh, next, I will show you a video about um, My College Quick Start Online.